Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna continue to look at trig derivatives. More specifically, we're gonna look at some example problems involving trig derivatives and the chain rule. For reference, here are the six trig derivatives that we discussed in the last video. Now we're gonna take these to the next level, where each function has an inner function that we're going to call u. So when taking the derivative of each of these, we need to multiply by du dx because of the chain rule. For example, the derivative of sine u is cosine u times du dx. The same pattern applies to all the other trig derivatives. Let's look at some examples. Problem 1. Find the derivative of tan 3x. Here we can see that 3x is the inner function, so we'll call that u. That means du dx equals 3. So the derivative of tan u is secant squared u times du dx. That means the derivative of tan 3x is secant squared 3x times 3. Note that I've put the 3 in front of the secant squared to make the final answer look more organized. All right, let's look at another problem. Suppose we want to find the derivative of cosecant e to the x. Take a moment and try the problem for yourself first before viewing the solution. Here we can see that e to the x is the inner function, so we'll let u equal e to the x. That means du dx is also e to the x. So the derivative of cosecant e to the x is negative cosecant e to the x times cotan e to the x, but multiplied by du dx, which is e to the x. And note that I've moved the e to the x to the front so that the final solution looks clean. All right, let's try another problem. Find the derivative of sine cubed x squared plus 2x plus 1. Here it's important to note that the sine cubed x squared plus 2x plus 1 is really the quantity of sine x squared plus 2x plus 1 raised to the third power. It's important to remember this little notational quirk of trig functions. So now I hope you see that we have an inner function and an outer function. This means we're going to apply the chain rule. So first we'll apply the power rule to the outside. That gives us 3 times the quantity of sine x squared plus 2x plus 1 raised to the second power. Now we're going to take the derivative of the inside, but the inside function is also a composition of functions, so we have to use the chain rule again. The derivative of the outside part is going to be cosine of x squared plus 2x plus 1. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x plus 2. Now let's clean this up a bit. Let's move the 2x plus 2 term to the front. So that gives us 3 times the quantity of 2x plus 2. Then we're going to multiply that by sine squared of x squared plus 2x plus 1 times cosine of x squared plus 2x plus 1. Note the squared on the sine function. I've moved that squared next to the sine itself because that's conventional notation for exponents on trig functions. And that's the derivative. Now there is an easier way of thinking about the last example, and it's called the PTA rule for trig derivatives, where PTA stands for power trig angle. When you have a trig function that's raised to a power, you can apply the PTA rule to find the derivative. First, we take the derivative of the power and leave everything else the same, except we reduce the power by one. Then we take the derivative of the trig function and leave the inside angle the same. Finally, we take the derivative of the angle. Then we multiply all these together and we have the derivative. Also note that I'm referring to angle as the inside of a trig function because a trig function takes in an angle as its argument. You might remember sine theta, cosine theta, etc. from trigonometry class. Well here, x squared plus 2x plus 1 is that inside part. That's the angle. Okay, let's try the PTA rule with this example. Find the derivative of secant to the seventh of 4x. First, we're going to take the derivative of the power portion. That gives us 7 secant to the sixth power of 4x. Then we take the derivative of the trig portion. That would give us secant 4x times tan 4x. Finally, we take the derivative of the angle. That would give us 4. Then we multiply all these together and we have the derivative. Now you could leave the derivative like this or you could clean it up. We could multiply the 4 and 7 to get 28 and we could also combine secant to the 6th 4x with secant 4x and that would become secant to the 7th of 4x. So here's our final derivative, 28 secant to the 7th 4x tan 4x. 
Let's do one last example. Find the derivative of cotan 3x times ln x. The first thing to note here is we have a product of functions. That means we have to use the product rule. And we're going to use trig rules and the chain rule. Isn't this awesome? So, with the product rule, we're going to have left d right plus right d left. The left function is cotan 3x. The derivative of the right function ln x is 1 over x. Then we're going to add the right function ln x times the derivative of cotan 3x, which is negative cosecant squared 3x times 3 because of the chain rule. Then we can clean this up a bit. We can have cotan 3x over x for the left term and minus 3 ln x cosecant squared 3x for the right term. And that's the derivative. In your calculus journey, you're bound to see many different types of problems involving trig derivatives. Just remember to keep on practicing, and that's how you rock calculus! <laughs>